Uh, welcome to this video. This video is to show you how to set up a fader port uh, on Logic Studio. Um, it's supposed to be straightforward, but there can be a few problems. Um, the issues with the fader port itself, I had that these uh, it wasn't recognised. It wasn't shown up in the, the list on the Logic's control surfaces. Um, if you press the punch button, um, that button there just started flashing and all the lights started flashing. Um, generally the buttons wouldn't work, like the mute solo, everything was mixed up and it wasn't working right. So the first thing you need to do um, in Logic is check which version of Logic um, you're on at the moment. Uh, and this is 9.1.4. Um, when you buy Logic it does need updating from time to time to get all the latest bug fixes and uh, like the fader port wouldn't work with the original version um, so you need to update that to the latest version uh, now th this was the first problem um, to do an update it's easy just click on the Apple uh, software update and that automatically scans all your programs and tells you which ones have got downloads available for them now I knew that logic needed to be updated um, but it wouldn't wouldn't find the program and update it um, now the problem there was, and if you go into your applications, I mean that's just called Logic Pro now, but what had gone on with my mind had something like that, it was like Logic Pro 1.1.0 or something like that. Um, now it won't, I won't rename that now, but it won't recognise it if it's got a number in like that. You have to rename that so it just says Logic Pro. And when you do that, do the scan and then it'll find logic then, it'll update it and that won't be a problem. Um, next thing you need to do is a firmware update for the, the fader port itself. Um, that's straightforward if you just go on the, the internet. Um, PreSonus, um, PreSonus.com there. Just go straight to that technical support, software updates and drivers. Uh, just scroll down there, fader port. I won't download this now. Uh, but if you had, just click on download, it downloads, opens itself up, and then that guides you through the setup process. It will tell you what to do to install the latest um, firmware for that. It'll install the drivers, and then you should be good to go. Um, one little problem that I had as well which was probably due to the name of Logic not being Logic Pro being a different one it didn't know where to put the driver um, so if you find that you've installed it um, if you've done everything and the list is not in your Logic list of control services surfaces um, then what you need to do is go to your applications um, your fader port will be in here after it's been set up. If you go to Logic you'll see the fader port bundle um, which is a little package that it needs to uh, run Logic. Um, so if you open that then what you need to do is go back into applications um, if you go to your Logic profile um, right click and then show package contents um, in the contents so you'll see MIDI device plugins. If you open that and then drag and drop your fader port bundle package into there. Um, I mean that's already in there, that's why it's caught with that message. But if you put the bundle in there then then that should that'll fix that problem. Um, so once you've done either or or all of those, you need to set up um, the fader port in Logic's devices. Um, so if you go to Logic Pro, preferences, control surfaces set up, click new install um, this is the list I was talking about before if it doesn't say pre or fader port there there's an option you'll have to do that take that uh, bundle and put it in the um, in the MIDI file of the logic folder um, so we'll add that just close that window down um, so we've got the fader port now. What you need to change here is the output port. Um, change that to fader port and input port. Change that to fader port again. 
um, close that window and now the fader port should be set up with logic the automation let to just zoom in on these just to show you how the faders work Now this is uh, automation that I've drawn in, which to be honest with you, I didn't buy the fader port for the fader, I prefer to program the automation, but if you look at the automation there, and then watch um, watch the fader, you'll see the fader following this line here, which is the, uh, this is a volume automation, um, this is a panning automation, um, so if you listen to this bit here, you'll see what that's like. <laughs> So that's um, that's the fader port being automated. Um, the idea of the fader port is to be able to manually adjust uh, your automation there. So if you want to change um, anything around here, just for example, um, what you could press for is touch. Um, just press the the fade is set up here, it's moving down. If I want to stop that, I could alter the fader like that, and as soon as I let go, it'll go back to where it was already set to. So if I take that up there, let go, it'll go back down to where it was already set to. Um, if you don't like what you've just done, the undo button here, just press that, and that'll undo the steps there, and then uh, put it back to what it was. Um, it's the same with the balance. Um, so you can use that there for the balance again. I'll do that. Um, I personally, I prefer to the automation manually there. Change the curves and I don't know, it's just a smoother curve than you'd get if you were you was writing that um, with the fader port itself. Um, and just press mix, we'll get that window back up there. Take the saw off, shift, just go to that bit there just to see what this sounds like. <laughs> 